Merch Minds Podcast, episode 117. And uh, my name is Glenn, YouTube channel Hustler Hacks. Yang is here. Yang, how's the time change? Screwing me up, man. Screwing me up big time. Did you even go to work today? <laughs> of course I went to work, man. What kind of question <laughs> is that? Okay, sorry. Uh, I, I don't know. You no. looked a little sleepy and a little sluggish. I was like, you probably didn't even go to work. Oh, dude. Well, no. I mean, you know what? You know what's funny is I... I recall having this conversation last year, okay, after daylight saving. And I know it's only 60 minutes, but man, last year I was tired. And then again, yes, because we normally record what either Friday or Mondays, right? Yeah. Clearly, we didn't record last Friday. So I was thinking, well, we're going to record on Monday. Man, that damn daylight saving messed me up big time, dude. You told me it was allergies, and now I told you it was both, man. I told you it was freaking. It was. It's only sixty minutes, but I felt like I lost hours of sleep. But not just that, my allergies were kicking my ass, so I was a hot mess yesterday. <laughs> a hot mess. So, in case people are wondering, like, what happened to the podcast last week? So, Yang went to the trip. Um, we didn't get to record. He was gone. He came back, um, and then we have the whole uh, allergies thing and stuff. So now we had to move it. But now we're here. That's what's most important. Right? Yo, man, are you going to put that all on me now? What the hell? <laughs> no, what? I'm just telling everybody you were gone. You were at RJ's thing. Anything you want to share about that? It wasn't RJ's thing, but um, um, I did go to a mastermind <laughs> last week. Um, no, seriously, it wasn't RJ's thing. I did go to a mastermind last week. Was that last week? Man, it seems like it was forever. Yeah, it was last weekend. <laughs> um, I was in Orange County. Uh, and, um, obviously I can't talk too much about, uh, what we discussed, but basically it was a mastermind put on, uh, uh, by some of the leaders of the community, uh, a bunch of people flew in, I flew in, um, and it was a, um, it was a cool mastermind because instead of, I mean, they had a few presenters, but other than that, it was just everyone just engaging, having conversations, right? That's what was cool about it. Um, uh, so I encourage everyone, man, create your own mastermind, okay? How many times do we have to tell you guys? Even if you can't do it physically, you can do it virtually through the magic of the Internet, you know, this thing called the Internet, okay? You can, you can do hangouts with other people, okay? Create your own group because I swear, man, that's probably the best thing you can ever do for any business. I mean, I, every time I get together with these guys, I feel like I learned so much. Yeah, Young's uh, numbers are going to explode. Maybe they've already exploded because we haven't talked about numbers in a while. Um, so numbers, I'll start <laughs> out with mine, and they're uh, pretty rough. Actually, so uh, five days ago, six days ago, I was doing pretty good. I was back up to like 350 a month range. Like, I think I sold... A good amount one of the days and then after that day flew off i haven't seen any good days since you're back on the schedule um, though too right i'm back on schedule the numbers are not back on schedule they're trying to get back it's, it's, I'm, I'm telling you man it's getting tough so last seven days uh 74 products sold low that's probably the lowest i think um in a while after i saw a good increase like i said um Probably the last like last week it was really good, and then it just like slowly seven returns, which is actually high. Last time I was like at two or three, gone up again. Estimated royalties two hundred thirty six dollars eighty three. Wow! Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm at right now. The other sales, um, international stuff here and there, but nothing like nothing amazing okay. you could throw in there. <laughs> um, my numbers are a little similar. Um. They they have dropped as well. Um, here, so 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 let's go over my last my last seven days. Uh, Eighty two products sold, three returns. Uh, product purchases one thousand six hundred and four dollars and thirty five cents. Estimated royalties three hundred and seventeen dollars and eight cents. Uh, significant drop from a couple of weeks ago because remember I was in the four hundred dollar range mm -hmm. as far as the royalties and i think that was the case for you if i recall correctly so uh definitely lost a, about a hundred bucks there and i think it's just gonna get worse um because just based on the time of the year 
but also because again i think merch is just getting really saturated oh what so, a way to stay positive for the listeners do you want me to lie <laughs> hey you know what next week we're all gonna make thousands of dollars in royalty guaranteed finally how's that you know what happened um well st patrick's day for sure is already this sunday i think it's on the 17th yeah uh, 30 in five days okay well dude keep the take the bass out of your voice man i can hear you just fine man you ain't gotta <laughs> yell sorry i'm uh, used to uh talking into the camera uh, um but yeah um i think after saint patty's day cells will be uh pretty much dead for the most part in my opinion i know we have easter coming up from my own personal uh, experience easter has never been a good uh, holiday for shirts i don't know about you Nah, not really uh, and i think even for saint patrick's day i think uh, i sold a couple last couple of days but i think that's also been mm -hmm. i guess for the decline i mean that's i've sold saying. more like last week of saint patrick's day so. that's what i'm saying so i think after saint patty's day i think sales are going to be really hard to get um uh I'm, and i'm predicting let's see i i don't think mother's day is going to do that well as far as t-shirts i think the next best holiday for the t-shirts would probably be uh father's day yeah, mother's day can do good i've done good on mother's day yeah yeah okay actually we'll, i should probably start doing that now now that you brought it up okay well we'll see i mean maybe it'll be different for me this year uh for me mother's day has always been bad but father's day has always been good mm interesting yeah i probably should start working on those now um, um, get these mother's day shirts up but yeah so 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 those are uh, that's merch let's see um my uh 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 my live designs dude they dropped big time i went from what four thousand over four thousand listings about a month ago i have i when i checked last night i had a little under three thousand, so yeah. I had about I had about a thousand designs drop off. Again, that's because I've been uh, uh, primarily focusing on KDP. Uh, as far as KDP is concerned, I think I have somewhere between six hundred and fifty journals, maybe seven hundred journals live now. Um, I think last time I checked, I did break the hundred mark point. Again nothing to write home about but you know hey i created an income stream i didn't have before whether it was 50 bucks 100 bucks i don't care that's 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 an income stream i didn't have before so so i'm proud of what i did um and uh before we get on with this week's episode just wanted to give a huge shout out to uh, uh our good friend dean and courtney they were in um, um orange county last week if you guys don't remember Dean and Courtney, they're the ones that we interviewed a couple of months ago. Um, you know, they bought their own DTG printer. Mm -hmm. Dude, when I saw them in Orange County, uh, they've been they've been growing and scaling ever since. Man, they were telling me that they're about to buy another printer. So good wow. for those guys. They did say though, it is a lot of work. Oh yeah, I bet. So uh, uh, so let's put an asterisk there in in case anyone wants to venture into that route of um buying your own printer and fulfilling your own orders um they did say it is a lot of work um so just be prepared if that's something that you guys want to consider um before we get into today's topic uh hey just just this ain't even merch related okay <laughs> Did you hear about this freaking crazy college bribery scheme that's been going on? Oh, yeah, I did see that. It just came out today, man. <laughs> I did see that. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Wasn't that, that like celebrities that? paying coaches Dude, and stuff? Well, like... well, it's not just celebrities. Apparently, like, just, just people. I mean, there are a few celebrities apparently that involved. That, that, that's involved, but apparently just, just people that are just well off in general that have the money. <laughs> You know they're 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 paying they're paying off certain people 
uh, uh, to get their kids into some of the more uh, prestigious universities in the country. We're talking not just Stanford, uh, but we're talking USC, UCLA. UT Austin was on there. Uh, oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Austin. Um, I think they, they said Harvard and Yale. Or, but, man, you talk about the privilege, being privileged. Jeez. <laughs> what is that about? Huh? <laughs> did, you that ever play, is, did you play sports in, in high school? Or middle school or high school? I um, I played uh, high school football up until my sophomore year. Okay. After I came back uh, from summer vacation, all the guys I grew me. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and I couldn't play football anymore because <laughs> I was too small. Man, everyone I grew me. <laughs> Did uh, you, ever, I, you didn't get hurt or anything or any like main no, injury? Yeah, either. Okay, no. that's good. And then, and then um, I couldn't play basketball because I was just too short. So I really excelled in wrestling. Um, so, I, so I did wrestling. Uh, cheerleading. I, I, um, cheerleading, mm. uh, synchronized swimming, um, all that. Equestrian. Beer pong. Uh -huh. um, beer pong is a very, very skilled sport, by the <laughs> way. But um, um I was, I was just going to say, because back in high school, like that was the only thing I didn't really know. Well, middle school and high school that I didn't really know about, which were like politics with like parents and coaching. Mm -hmm. Like, to because to me, I was just like, man, we play basketball with like the kids during like lunchtime after school, blah, blah, blah. You know who's good. And then once it started getting to like organized and like all of that, I was like, what's the deal with like all these parents like talking to like the coaches over and over again? And then we had one kid in high school. I mean, he just sucked bad at basketball. Like the first oh. open gym, he he like shot it. It went over the basketball went over the backboard and like into like the stands, like bleacher area. Like oh, wow. he was that bad. But his dad bought like brand new uniforms for the team, so he was like easily on the team. He rode the bench, but he was on the team. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just makes wow. me like think about more of like the uh, politics side of uh. I guess yeah, no, and... you know, here's the thing. I, I mean, I have my own opinions on 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 what happened on, on the news that came out. Um, and I think I, I truly believe it happens more than we actually think. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, but man, but apparently, like millions and millions of dollars have been paid out. Um, and uh, apparently, it's, I mean, uh, the university never knew. Right, I mean, they're not to blame, but apparently there's like some guy who kind of like just spearheaded this whole thing, um, and <laughs> mastermind. and, and uh, he ma yeah he he just masterminded this whole scheme uh, uh, and um, um, just took in like millions and millions of dollars just to get um, you know students into the colleges. Man, <laughs> oh, hey, a hey, young works at a university. Talk to him. That is nuts. But you know what? Speaking of education, we do have a really good story uh, uh, besides that. We we are interviewing our good friend, Mitch Fairfield from Texas. I think he's in from, I think he's in Austin. In fact, I know for a fact he's in Austin because um, we almost had breakfast a couple of years ago in Austin. Um, but um, he's someone that I've been trying to get on the show for a while. And, you know, with, with Mitch, it's never been about the money for him. It's always been about um, taking, us. taking, taking this opportunity. Okay, print on demand, whether it was merch or or Redbubble, uh, and teaching his students. Okay, um, the value of um, not just designing, but teaching them uh, um, the value of making money and ha and running a business. Right, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk to Mitch. Uh, he's a good guy. And after the show, I really, really encourage every single one of you guys to go subscribe to his channel. Let's talk to Mitch. This is a really exciting show. This is probably like the, this is going to be like the feel good interview. Uh, and he's a good friend of ours, uh, Mitch, uh, someone we met a couple of years ago. Uh, when we were in Denver. Uh, Mitch, welcome to the show. Uh, please 
introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Mitch. First of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, Anytime. And, and my name is Mitch Fairchild. I'm a graphic design teacher in uh, Hutto, Texas, uh, big city of Hutto. It's, um, I've been in graphic design now for going on eight plus years of uh, teaching it. I've been doing it for about 20 years. Um, and I teach everything from, um, we do basic um, design to animation to video and uh, audio editing to you name it. We do it. Okay. Um, that's great, Mitch. Okay. I was going to say we lost your video there for a second, but you're back. But that's great. Look, here's the thing. Okay. And this is why I wanted to have you um, – because uh, I've been asking you for some time now, and you've been just kind of blowing me off. I finally no, got man, you. I've, I've been barbecuing, dude. Barbecuing is like the thing, man. Hey, hey you know what? We'll get into that because <laughs> I like barbecue myself, man. Okay, so <laughs> we have cool. a lot in common here. There you um, go. But, um, um, but you guys know how I feel about education. Um, I think education is very important. Um, and so, therefore, you guys know how I feel about teachers. Um, I have nothing but the highest respect for, for what you do uh, uh, and, you. And, and, and what you do for the kids. And I, and I really mean that. Um, Thank you. So uh, what, what grade do you teach? I teach um, middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth. That's super cool, man. That's yeah, super cool. And what's really uh, cool is they don't like, at least here in Texas, we don't offer uh, graphic design in middle school. We're one of the very few schools in Texas that offers graphic design. Really? Course, yeah. Well, this kind of, kind of, uh, kind of uh, tells my age, but we didn't have graphic design. Period. Yeah, no, those Apple IIe's back in the day, they wouldn't hold on to graphic design. They wouldn't. Right. I don't know if they could do that back then. Glenn, when when were you introduced? Uh, I didn't know about it until I didn't know till maybe like college, or like sophomore, junior year. So even in high school, it was like I knew of Photoshop, but I didn't know like graphic design is what they were calling like. Right, it gets this whole thing. So, um, yeah, not until like college. Yeah, because I remember originally you said you went to college to do uh, programming or something. Yeah, computer science. Yeah, computer science. And then you were just like, "Oh, this is way over my head. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get into graphic design." But yeah, no, I mean, I was introduced to graphic design late in high school, and even then, I was like, "What is this, man?" But, um, but no, I think that's super cool. Uh, uh, Again, Mitch, that you're that you're doing that. But again, we met a couple of years ago. This is how mm -hmm. dedicated yeah. this guy is. He lives in he lives in Texas. We had that meetup, workshop, seminar, whatever you want to call it in Denver. Freaking awesome, Mitch man. drives all the way from Austin, attends the seminar, and then right afterwards he drives drives back home and you actually documented that on your channel yeah 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 i did yeah it was no that was a blast i love that whole experience meeting everybody you know having a chance to finally meet margaret put a face to the voice and i mean that whole thing was really cool it was cool and it was it was, it was really good meeting people and uh uh you know that's something glenn and i really enjoy doing and it's something that you know we want to do more but it's just it's so much hands-on work i'm sure you know, there's, there's so much work that we have to get done behind the scenes and it's just <sighs> yeah, that's a lot of work, but um. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Mitch. So okay. your ch so you have a YouTube channel. I okay. do. I try to document what I'm doing. I, it used to be Mitch on merch when I was did doing you, uh -huh. just the stuff myself. Then I kind of did a branding uh, change and uh, started focusing on my students. Once we started getting deeper and deeper into what we're doing now. Okay, so explain that. So, so it, uh, it was like you said, it was called Mitch on merch, and mm -hmm. it was just you kind of. Documenting, just documenting my 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 your, your own total, personal yeah, just uh, merch by Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, what, then once and then one, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you. So, what made you change it to uh, your current channel, Student Like a Boss? Yep, Student Like a Boss. Uh, just watching the first of all, you know, when we first when we met in um, Colorado, I had said that I was going to go back and teach my students. How, you know, I was going to introduce them to. Um, well, initially, it was merch by Amazon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just the whole pre-on-demand process. Um, and then when I got back, so that was, I think that was like October. Was that October of like 16? Anyway, wow. when we got back, I didn't introduce it into the curriculum until like the last three, maybe four months of, of class. So there, there wasn't a whole lot they could do. And so then I realized, you know, if I'm going to make this work, if it's going to be, you know, 
if it's going to impact these kids, because I teach at a Title I school and I've always taught at a Title I school. So I have a heart for students who are, you know, in need and just don't have a lot of money and come from families that are broken and families that, you know, financially are not stable. So I'm always looking mm. for ways to, you know, better these kids' lives. And I thought, man, what a great way to help these kids help themselves if you introduce them to some kind of program that could help them start early, which we're talking middle school start early and you'll know, find a way to start making a little side income that could possibly eventually turn into something, you know, even bigger than that down the road. So, you know, and when I came up with the whole student, like a boss thing, it was, you know, these, these kids being awesome kids, they're students like a boss, but at the same time, I want them to be entrepreneurs, students like a boss. So that's how I came about. I got you. That's cool, man. Glenn, you're obviously the YouTube superstar here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, we got the YouTube celebrity. Do you have any questions for student like a boss here? Um, I, I guess the first question. So when you started, you know, talking about graphic design and and teaching it, mm -hmm. what was the response from students initially? And no, and well, kind of learning what graphic design was. Well, we came into the pro. I came. I got hired on at this school. I came from my old school. This is crazy, and y'all gonna laugh, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. It was a Title One school. It had it. It was a Title I school that had just opened its doors. It was a, uh, it was a, um, inter a international baccalaureate school, so an IB school. And so our big focus was on taking these students out of, you know, inner city and making them, you know, um, college ready. And so they, I got hired on there as a coach, and then they opened this new department called, um, it, it was called design back then because we taught everything from, I mean, I taught animation, I taught uh video game design i taught i even taught students how to make shoes like we we learned the whole design <laughs> cycle and all that and um so they asked me can you teach them graphic design i'm like sure man i mean i've been using photoshop but i can even do publisher just tell me what you want to do they're like well we don't have that what can you do with what we got i'm like well what do we got they said wow. we have we have microsoft um paint the whole microsoft suite no we didn't even have to, yeah well basically yeah, we had little paint um so i'm like uh and I remember back, I'm talking like a lot, like when PowerPoint first came out, I started playing around with PowerPoint, just using the shapes to make different things, make animations and stuff. And so like, I'm going to like take that and then work with these kids with that. So like my first like two years in quote unquote graphic design was teaching students how to, you know, make stuff in, in uh, PowerPoint. And so they were doing incredible things to the point where I was like getting calls from high school teachers saying, hey, these kids are doing better than my kids with Photoshop. In PowerPoint, how are you doing? I'm like, it's just I don't know. It's just something I learned along the way to you know kind of cheat the system. So, <laughs> and then now I like I'll use uh, Google Drawings. I use uh, uh, Publisher, and then before we're over, we'll we'll dive a little bit into uh, like vintage the vintage app and Canva things that these students can get for free or for like for a very small cost. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't want them you know wasting like they don't have the money to waste twenty dollars a month for you know, the Adobe suite or, or anything like that. Sure, sure. I mean, l let alone the computer, it sounds like. Exactly. So, no, I think I think that's really great what you're doing. Again, this is like the feel-good interview of the year, if not the decade. Because uh, I, yeah. I think what you're doing is awesome. Um, and it's really cool that you're awesome. I mean, you're not teaching them design, but like you said, you're teaching them the art Skill. of business yeah, at exactly. such an early age. How, yeah. are they, how are they taking that? Uh, they loved it. I was, you know, I was more worried about it. I, I approached my principal and I told him, I said, this is what I want to do. Well, after we left you guys, I'm like, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, I see where our kids are coming from. Like I, I've had students who have had to go leave school, go to work to make money for their family so that their family can have money to live on. These are like middle school students and they come back to school the next day and, you know, we, we get, we get mad at it because, well, why are you sleeping in my class? We don't take into consideration that. Well, they're probably out working, you know, a 12 hour job overnight, mm -hmm. not able to do their homework. So, I just, you know, I just had a heart to help these students, um, you know, figure it out quicker than because I, and it, I was right in the middle of writing my doctorate for my, uh, for my doctorate, my, my doctoral program, and I was right, and I was like, you know, I what we're that. doing, it, it, it dawned on me, it's like what we're what we're doing, the system is broken. Like I'm like, like it was so frustrating. Like I just walked away from it. I'm like, I can't, I can't, you know. I can't keep studying this if it's wrong. So I, I just did a whole, it was a whole, basically a whole life change, a life shift for me. Uh, just, and so I approached my principals and they're like, uh, sounds kind of weird, but you know, do whatever. Because I, like I said, when I came to the program, it was like a, a year old, if that. So mm. I, mean, I was able to do whatever I wanted to with it. And then mm -hmm. 
so the first year we did like the last month of school we did uh the students created um this was two years ago the students created a um a diary and they put it up in um back then it was create space and that was kind of a big flop <laughs> so then after you know we and then the next year is when I, I saw you guys and so like i think like after christmas i started doing the curriculum building the curriculum so that i knew going into that those last few months i wanted to have a solid program and so we went into that jumped into that and it was perfect it was great um the students loved it uh but it was it just wasn't enough time so then over the summer i'm like screw it I, i'm just gonna go all year so like we're, we started, you know, day one, learning all the stuff we had to learn for, well, actually, the first year we had to get parent permission. So when all my students come to my class, and it is an option, because not every parent, like some parents are scared of the internet, which I totally understand. Sure. So I get that. I'm like, I get that. So, so we send out home the, uh, the permission slips. But, you know, of my, I, I added it up, I wish I was in my classroom. I added up, it was like, I have roughly a hundred and 30 students and of those 130 students, only nine students were not allowed to do it, mm -hmm. but they wanted to. So the thing is then, so you're like, so here's the deal, you know, those nine students, I'm like, listen to what I say and, and just pay attention to what we do so that, you know, when you graduate or when your parents finally give you permission, you'll know what to do. So how cool is yeah, that, man? But, the, but cool I was, the, the parents are excited. You know, I'm constantly getting emails from parents saying, you know, this is like changing my kids' life. Like I, I've got, and I've got a whole bunch of case studies here over here on the side. But I've got like one girl, and I just documented her last week. She's like, she's one of these girls like you would not. She doesn't like talk. She's not very social. Mm. She just she doesn't like reach out to people. And you know, if she's in the cafeteria, sounds, those, those sounds the like kids. Glenn kind of. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you like Glenn. <laughs> so she's the girl that's like sitting by herself in the cafeteria, and she may have some friends, but they're like you know the kind of the I guess we call them goth, whatever. Um, but no, she's been, and she's a great artist, like on paper. So wow. she's been, she's been making, she's, she's, and she asked me, Mr. Fairchild, can I bring my uh, Wacom, my drawing tablet? And I'm like, sure, bring it in. I don't care as, as long as you understand that if it gets stolen or broken, you know, it's on you. So she's like, yeah, I'll bring it in my responsibility. So I'm like, yeah, bring it in. And so she starts doing, you know, these incredible drawings on her tablet, putting them up in her Redbubble store, which we're using Redbubble, which we'll get into in just a minute. And she's like, making sales left and right like international sales like so it's wow. it's freaking and you know this is a girl who probably didn't have much value in herself you know a couple of months ago so mm. it's been it's been awesome that is really uh, cool. that's a great story glenn questions uh well i just wanted to get into um i guess first introducing the students into Redbubble, or i don't know if you did a little bit of merch or at least you t i think maybe you, you know the, the first year about it and the first year we tried merch um, okay the problem was there was so much like, you know, at the time merch had a wait. So when we got back from Denver, I mm -hmm. immediately sent those things home. So I knew, you know, when I got in, it was like three or four months for me to get in. And so it was still taking them time to get, I don't even know what it is now. Do there still a wait? Do y'all know? I think, still it, a yeah, I think it depends on, on the individual. Yeah. And that's what, that's something else. Somebody was saying that they want proof or they would like to see that you have stuff already up or that you're already selling. I don't know, whatever. So I'm like, so parents are contacting me like my kid can't get in. They're telling me, you know, yeah. he, he can't get it. So I'm like, screw it. I know Redbubble is 100 percent. You know, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. sure. So I'm like, we'll just we'll do Redbubble. And then and which the beauty in that is these are high school. I mean, sorry, middle school students. So T-shirts. Eh, but then you add in phone cases and you add in pillows and you add in all these other things that Redbubble offers. Man, these they love it. So oh, man, that's great. Kind of great. That's great. So so do you find that the kids are motivated by the money or they just, um, want, or they just, or they just enjoyed learning from, from teacher Mitch. No, they, they love the class. Like now you ask them, that's not a pride thing. Okay. They love okay. It. So I, they love the class. I had it, I would have, I would love it too, but. But there's that the extra class. motivation when it, when it, you know, cause, cause now they're also, there's that incentive of them getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're that's making awesome. Money. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's cool. Man. I mean, what's, what's so funny is for the longest, and this was, I was, I challenged them too. I'm like, Okay, so the first, you know, the first student came in like maybe two or three weeks after, and he sold his first product, and then it was like all the students are like, "Whoa!" So then they all like catch on, so they start. And I'm like, "You have to upload the more you upload, the more chances you get of getting seen, getting purchased." So yeah, they're like constantly just putting out. Then I'm like, "Don't put out crap, put out your good stuff." And so it's been a constant process. They, uh, you know, they love it, and they, they, um, so 
our, oh, our most this year, our most is we have a girl who sold so far. She sold just over $150 worth of product. And you have to remember, this is going all year long. So is they're not, that, they're not that, constantly that for the uploading. Week? No, that's, no, that's since we started. Well, she's wish. making more than all of us combined. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, you know, it's funny because I will. So last year when we did it for the, for those few months, I had a student come in and he sold, he's Miss Fairchild. I think I'm up to 220 bucks. I'm like, you mean you wow. sold that much product? He goes, no, that's profit. I'm like, what are you doing? Because I'm not making that much. <laughs> yeah. And so he's, he's like, he went and his dad went and got him some, um, some business cards, put a QR code on there. With, when, and he, he did a lot of, uh, he still, he still does it actually. He does a lot of lacrosse because he's real big into lacrosse, which is something that's unheard of here in Texas kind of, but lacrosse he's real what? big into, into lacrosse and like, so his lacrosse designs are like selling left and right, man. And he just passes cards out at his lacrosse games. Is, is it, it's crazy. Is, is lacrosse the one where, where you run on the field and, and you have like that, uh, the stick, the, the yeah. stick, stick okay. the little net thing. Yeah. And then... the net. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's football hockey. Is what so, it so, so it sounds like the kid, and, and I'm not trying to sound funny or nothing, but it sounds like so he's got the he's got the little business card with a QR code. Mm -hmm. He's like doing his own version of local merch. He is. That was before I even heard of Mike Gall. Like he right? was doing stuff, and I was like, I was like, dang, this is a good idea. That is so awesome. yeah, now these kids and they're doing, I mean, they're doing incredible things. I got stuff I wouldn't even think of. Uh -huh. They're they're awesome. Are you guys still using uh, um, um, PowerPoint, or or did the school upgrade you guys to? No, like this is Photoshop? so. So since then, I've moved to a new school. We do have Power. We do have Photoshop and Publisher, but we don't. The thing is, when you add um, graphic design in middle school, you have high school that teaches Photoshop and Illustrator. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't, I can't teach them Photoshop when they get to high school. They won't have nothing to learn. So yeah. yeah, I still, I still, and I actually have. I'm supposed to have seventh grade, but I actually, so I have graphic design one, but I actually have six, seventh and eighth graders who have never taken graphic design before. So we still do uh, some power. We still do a lot of PowerPoint. We do a lot of publisher, um, Google drawings and yeah, things like that. So, yeah. That is super cool, man. That is super cool. Now, how's your, how's your own personal merch doing? Uh, merch, it's merch by Amazon. I'm still doing a couple hundred dollars a month. So I haven't really been focusing on it. Matter of fact, this is really mm -hmm. sad. I've got no, 2,000 2, slots. You're a busy guy. I got 2,000 slots, and I've got like 996 of them full. <laughs> That's so I've been focused because I've been focusing on this. Plus, and I will tell you this, and if there's any teachers out there, you need to listen to what I'm about to say. Um, and you may know this already, but uh, teachers pay teachers. If you are a graphic designer or if you have great curriculum, you need to be selling that stuff on teachers pay teachers because it's there's a market there for it. What is that? If you're good pay? at what you do. What is that? So teachers, teachers pay teachers is a, it's like a, it's a website where teachers can go to upload their curriculum. I got and then, you. So say I teach graphic design, somebody else teaches graphic design. They can buy my stuff from me mm -hmm. so that they're set for the year. Okay. So okay. I've been doing a lot of that. All right, cool, man. So, so tell us about your little barbecue venture, man. What happened? Shoo. So it got, it actually got to the point where it was taking over like our lives. Like we were doing, like Christmas would get here and we'd have orders coming in and it was a, it was a mess, man. It was crazy. We did, I did to the point where like I was focusing so much on that, that I was ignoring, you know, stuff I shouldn't be, I should be paying attention to. So we, we put the halt on that for a little while. Okay. I mean, are you, are you, are you you're still barbecuing? Oh, I am, but now I'm not doing it. I'm not, we're not selling it anymore. You're not doing it commercially, but you're still mm -hmm. doing it. For, look, yeah. we had a lot of guests on the show in the past. Okay. <laughs> We've been promised a lot of things. When I go out to Austin, Texas again to visit, will I get an invitation to try some of Mitch's barbecue? Let me let me know when you're coming. I'll make you a whole brisket. Is that is that it, really? Is that a promise? Yeah, that's and like if you were to go anywhere else, that's like two three hundred dollars worth. I'll give it to you for free. Go ahead, you win. Do it. I'm in, dude. The next time y'all come, next time y'all come to Austin, let me know. I'm I'm there. Dude, in fact, we were supposed to meet up uh, a couple yeah, of years was, ago. About um, a year ago, yeah. Yeah, about a year and a half ago, I was there. I contacted Mitch at the last minute. Um, it was my fault. Um, you were willing to meet up for breakfast, yeah. but I was, I, I was on a schedule, um, so we couldn't meet. But um, um, I do appreciate the invitation. Um, no worries. Mitch, do me a favor, um, because Shoot. I think, I, 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 and I, and I really believe that you're onto something special. Um, uh, please keep doing what you're doing. Um, Absolutely. Uh, 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 regardless of how many subscribers you have, 
I want you to uh, continue to put out content because I really, really do believe in what you're doing. Um, cool. And I encourage every listener of the Merch Minds podcast, please, if you have, if you guys will understand if you have kids, please go go check out Merch's, uh, Merch's. go check out Mitch's channel, subscribe. Because like I said, this is probably like the feel good interview of the year, if not the decade. I mean, it really, really does warm your heart to know what you're doing for the kids, man. I do want to tell one more story right quick. I did have a student approach me and say, Mr. Fairchild, I just want you to know, this was from last year when we only had like three months to do it. He said, Mr. Fairchild, I want you to know that um, I've been selling. Actually, his teacher told me, he goes, yeah, he's still selling. He wants to sell it in my class. This is his next year, the teacher he has this year. He's always wanting to upload in my class. I'm like, well, let him do it. So she said, well, yeah, but he sold like over 200 products. I went and I talked to him. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He goes, Mr. Fairchild, I created my own brand. So I have all my clothes, all my stuff. It's all branded. So his own brand. So that's dude, like, man, you, got, you got kids doing <laughs> local merch, creating their own brand. It's crazy. Pretty soon, pretty soon they're going to start coming out with their own with their, with their own or software. God knows. Bring it. Bring it. That, that is awesome. But seriously, man, continue what you're doing. Uh, Will do. Um, I want to come out and visit you, man. I want to come visit the school if I can. Dude, you should come visit my kids because we, and it's so funny because every time we talk about typography, I'm like, I got a friend. Name is John. He'd kick your butt if he knew you were doing <laughs> I just, you know, Mr. Fairchild, I just want to use whatever the default is. Why do you want to use a default font? That's ridiculous. So it's like a huge, like typography is like, oh. Mm. <sighs> but yeah, no, it's a blast. No, I think that's awesome. Uh, Glenn, any final uh, comments for our good friend here? Uh, any, any uh, I guess, uh, comments or questions from the parents when either before or now after that they've been doing red no, the, nothing so far oh, the only thing i've heard from parents is great things they 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 love it and, it's, and speaking of of glenn so one of the things i'm looking into and i would love to do and the students would love to do and i found one website that'll do it but it's very confusing is to do custom shoes to put their artwork on, on canvas tennis shoes that would be awesome. Oh man, that sounds like and interest. I think it's called interest print. Interest print. I can't remember the name of the website, but they they'll do it. But you got to go through Shopify and through. It's just a crazy process. Little loophole. My students. Stuff. Yeah, it's, my students couldn't do that yet. Oh man, well that sounds awesome. I mean, custom shoes. Who knows what people can come out with? Yeah. Oh man, it'd be awesome. <laughs> well, well, hey, seriously, man, uh, continue what you're doing. Uh, we're gonna come out and visit. We'll do. Uh, I want my barbecue. Uh, because you Sweet. did promise me that you did promise me the barbecue. I did. I, I want to visit right. the kids. Um, and just one last thing. So it sounds like you launched this whole program after Denver, after Shoot. the meetup. Yeah. So it almost sounds mm -hmm. like Glenn, you and I, uh, uh, we encouraged Mitch to launch this program. Therefore, we should get some of the credit. Nah, I'm just joking, man. Mitch. That was that was all you, man. Congratulations. Well, that is that, and that's funny because that's one thing the parents are always like. So, how much how much of the profits does the school keep? I'm like zero. How much profits do you keep, Mr. Fairchild? I'm like zero. The kids keep 100 percent of the profit. Whatever. All, all them, man. Yeah, all that's them. Right here. Less for the school, more for the kids. Amen. Absolutely, man. Again, congratulations. Um, and we'll keep in touch. Yeah. Sweet. Sounds good. All right. Great interview with Mitch. Yes. Go subscribe to his channel. Um, I don't know why it took this long to get him on the show, but at least we got him on. Finally. You know what? I know why. Cause I I've asked him a couple of times in the past and he, he, um, he had always told me, uh, uh, um, he wanted a couple of success stories to share with us. Oh, okay. Um, so, so he wanted like the semester or the quarter. I don't know what they go by over there. Um, he wanted the semester to be over, so that way he he would have a good story to share with us. But definitely, man, look, teacher Mitch. Look, if I had a teacher like you, man, look, I would have probably had my PhD in graphic design. <laughs> I don't know if there's such a thing, but I'm, <laughs> you but, make um, one happen. But uh, uh, um, he's a good guy, man. You know what? He loves what he does. Uh, loves the kids and. Um, we love Mitch. I need to go pay him a visit. Okay. I want some of that barbecue. I think you and I, we should go pay him a visit. You can, we can, we can drag brother hacks if you want along, <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, go pay him a visit, man. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. And that'll be fun. Uh, so, I was going to ask you actually question, you know what, going back to the intro part, you said a couple of, you know, like a thousand designs fell off. Yeah. Um, 
I'm assuming most of these designs were paid designs that you paid a designer, right? What do you mean? Like they're, most of these designs that they're probably a mix. Probably the one, you know, probably ones that I've that I uh, that I made, and then probably the um, ones that I had uh, that I had paid. Okay. For. So my question is, are you planning to re-upload those a thousand designs? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because because that, that's always been my um, that's always been my um, strategy, right? Is every design that falls off, I just re-upload them. I just haven't had the time because I've been uploading on KDP, mm -hmm. right? And, and and I've talked about how tedious that process is, and I don't want to get into that again. Um, but that, that takes up a lot of my time. Um, are you going to alter any of them, like? Try to make them better. Maybe you think that it didn't sell for so, a certain reason, or just kind of just like a nah, re-upload. No, nah, just re-upload them. Um, uh, I think um, I, I'll tell you this much though: I, I'm no longer uploading on pop sockets or okay. premium T-shirts. Now I know the I know you guys knew for a while now that I wasn't uploading on premiums, but I'm no longer uploading onto pop sockets because at the end of the day, it's just they don't really sell for me. And when they do, it's only a couple bucks. So I'd rather, you know, put those designs on other products that I know will bring in a little more income. And you're still doing the hoodies, of course. So I'm still doing the hoodies. Um, so absolutely. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So uh, next week, um, I don't know. Next week, we're going to see how the numbers go. Cause I really want to try to get these numbers back up. Like you said, St. Patrick's Day will be done by then. So let's see where we're at um, for the numbers, and we'll go from there. Anything else you want to throw in? Nope. All right. We'll see you guys next week.